And I'm here today to bring you uh, some excerpts from the original teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda as expressed in Swami Kriyananda's autobiography called The, the Path or The New Path. And um, today, of course, I'm reading from the sections after he met Yogananda as a young man of 22, which is what he was. Um, today is December 28th, and here's a brief excerpt. One day, Norman and I sat down to lunch ravenous as usual we reached for the tray that had been set before us and gasped it was practically empty two cups of tepid water faintly flavored with chocolate and a couple of dry sandwiches that someone had waved in the general proximity of a jar of peanut butter and that was all what a banquet cried Norman in dismay. We paused a moment, then suddenly we were laughing. What comes of itself, Master often said, the Master, let it come. One of the keys he gave us in the unshakable inner peace was an ability to accept life as it is. Our meager fare that day gave us adequate food for meditation, if not for our bodies. Well, <laughs> this is um, a teaching, of course, about being even-minded and cheerful under all circumstances regardless in, of what comes our way in life. And it's not an easy teaching to actually practice. Um, it depends on our own karma, our own circumstances. If we find ourselves sort of going through life, being famished all the time, super hungry, who knows, perhaps we had died of starvation in a recent prior incarnation. Surely we've all lived it all at one point in time or another. But my point is that you and I may respond to the circumstances in our lives different, differently depending on what we bring to it, what our own karmic makeup is at that point in time. And so it's, it's not possible to pick it up from the outside in. It's not possible to pick it up and say, well, if this happens, I'm going to respond this way. And if this happens, I'm going to respond this way. The way to approach this is from the inside out, which is that in all circumstances in life, regardless how joyful, happy, exhilarating, or how painful and testy and challenging the circumstance might be, either either end of the spectrum, the response from us is to slow down the reactive process to, well, that's the first step anyway, is not to be as reactive to the outer circumstances in our lives. And meditation is a key technique, a key practice to help us achieve that even-mindedness because meditation slows down the reactive 
process. I know in my own life, I've witnessed this, that if there's some thing, some situation that, you know, just pushes my buttons every time, I just make a mental decision that I'm going to take the first step and neutralize it, not react to that situation. That's the negative step to take, which is to say the next step would be to be able to be even-minded and cheerful in all those circumstances that are otherwise testy for us. But if we can only start by simply not reacting, uh, taking a, a deep breath, you know what they say, that it's never good to speak in the heat of emotions, count to 10 first, take a few deep breaths. Taking that breath, it's all tied to the breath. And meditation techniques are tied to the breath because eventually we can achieve breathlessness if we practice them in their deepest possible manner. And so we take a breath, we slow down the reactive process to the situation and that comes with practice, that comes with daily, twice daily, ideally, meditation. It comes with calming the heart, calming the mind. It comes with slowing down the reactions. Ultimately, it's the ego that's reacting. Slowing down the, the, the way in which we live in our ego self, as opposed to our divine self in the stillness. Be still and know that I am God. In that stillness of heart and mind, we're able to finally, on a regular basis, predictably, Look at life and say, what comes of itself, let it come. Joy to you, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Blessings. Bye-bye now.